So welcome back, everyone. I hope you had a lovely wander downstairs or momentary rest to collect your thoughts, etc. Our next talk up is everything you wanted to know about Kubernetes RBAC, and this is Ben Hirschberg. Hirschberg, Hirschberg, thank you. <laughs> Please thank welcome you. Ben. <laughs> Can I, can you take a photo of me? I was asked to. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so do during the so spontaneously. Yeah. Like. So hi everyone. Um, so just before we start, okay, um, this is going to be a as a first there is going to be a basic talk about uh Kubernetes Arbuck. Then we'll go into some more interesting thing things. Um, just a few words about me before we start. I'm Ben, um, maintainer, one of the maintainers of Cubescape. Uh, project and uh, uh, also CTO at Armo. Um, I f originally I was uh, started my career from the security side of the industry, and gradually moved into cloud native, um, and trying to one of the organizers of CNCF in Jerusalem in Israel. Um, yeah, this is the, this is about me. Okay, so as I started to say, um, we're going to do some one-on-one -on, -one on, uh, on Kubernetes Arbuck with a few very specific uh, examples. Um, then, as I wrote, we'll do 102, which is like more of, of, uh, of how we are writing Kubernetes Arbuck uh, when we need to maintain it. And then we'll, I will bring you a few issues, okay, as part of the things we are seeing, you know, in Armo, uh, in uh, live Kubernetes clusters of issues with, uh, with Arbux. So, Let's go in, uh, let's start. Okay, so basics of Kubernetes Arbuck. So Kubernetes Arbuck is actually, you know, a feature of, of the Kubernetes API server. And you know, I guess, uh, as you most of you know, that Kubernetes API server is the main contact of uh, control of the Kubernetes control plane of any user uh, of, of Kubernetes. And, uh, and actually the API server has a few ways, okay, not just to, uh, Authorize actions, okay, uh, but also to authenticate you. And it has it's it it, it has an, it is an important to understand how it works, okay. So when the API when you are talking to API servers, there are two main ways to identify yourself against the API server. One is t uh, mutual TLS, a client authentication by a certificate and proving that you have the private key, okay. So when you're turning uh, 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 to the API server, actually you have to prove to the API server that you have the private key connected to your certificate. The second is is a uh, uh, single-sided TLS from the API server side, but you have to provide the token and connect it to it, open ID uh, protocol, and so on. So in other words, you're bringing a token with you and, uh, and prove who you are with, with the token uh, to the API server. And, but, in, but I have to tell you, in, in both cases, okay, and I'm not talking about st a static password because it's not worth talking, uh, um, but in both cases, from a security perspective, obviously it's very important, okay, to to rotate keys, uh, because you're going to see that actually all of these keys, from our perspective, okay, it's very important. So the API authorizations are uh, uh, ways. There are several strategies. Okay, Arbuck is only one of them, but I have to tell you that Kubernetes Arbuck is the clear winner. Okay, here Kubernetes Arbuck is the way today to manage access control inside a Kubernetes cluster. Now, how Kubernetes Arbuck is, is built up, okay. Uh, I'm sorry if you don't see it right, okay, but there is role definition. The role definition is actually what this role can do, okay, and it's very bound to the structure of the Kubernetes API in the sense that, that uh, all, of, um, all of the parameters which you can control in a role and you can limit with the role is actually coming from the HTTP header, okay, and more uh, more of the first line of the HTTP request. So where you have the path, the API group, uh, the resource you are uh, 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 you are turning to, and the HTTP word. The second uh, part is the subject, okay, the subject to who you are giving a role, okay. It can be a user, it can be a group, and it can be what they call a service account. Okay, which is actually a special user from inside the cluster, managed by actually the cluster itself. 
and these two are bounded with what we call a role binding. Okay, uh, so we can say which role can be uh, uh, used by which uh, which subject. So I brought here a few uh, uh, examples, and here there is a little de demystification. Okay, because sometimes we are not looking inside uh, uh, these artifacts. So. From a subject perspective, I brought here uh, 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 a certificate, okay? Uh, X509 uh, uh, certificate, a very standard certificate for which we are, I'm using in this case against Minikube to authenticate myself. And this certificate sits on my, uh, in my home directory under the .minikube uh, directory. And it is it, uh, the certificate is the same as you would have like if you're using Amazon.com to buy something. But the interesting part is this line, the subject, okay? The subject has, uh, which is subject in X509, is the one who this certificate was assigned to, and it has two uh, uh, um, sub uh, um, entries. One is the organization, okay? System masters. Organization translates from X509 to Kubernetes API server authentication as the group, okay? And the common name, CN, is Minikube user which is the user field. So this is the user and this is the group. So if I'm at, uh, 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 authenticating myself against the API server, okay, these, uh, from these two fields, the API server understands who it is talking to, which user and which group. Okay, now I brought you an example of a role, okay, a cluster role uh, in specific. And the interesting part is the rules field, okay? The rules field is actually where I'm determining uh, what is allowed to do, what this role is allowed to do. And you can see here the API group, the resources, and the verbs, okay? Um, these are three things, okay, which mostly, okay, there are other things, but, but in this case, uh, to simplify it, these are the three basic things, okay, which are defining a role, okay? If you are putting in these fields a wildcard character, it means that everything is accepted. So you can understand from this that the cluster role is pretty uh, permissive. Now I'm uh, showing you something a little bit more interesting, another cluster role, okay, where the, actually the resources are listed ex uh, explicitly, the verbs, the HTTP words, which can be the list and watch, uh, listed explicitly, okay, and, uh, and you can define uh, as a list of, of, of rules, you can define uh, these triplets, okay, in order to define the role inside uh, 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 the Kubernetes uh, role-based access control, okay? The binding object, which, I, as I told you, is connecting together uh, the, uh, the user group or, or, or service account, the subject, together with the role, is actually has two interesting parts, a role reference, okay, to which role I'm binding, and what, who are the subjects. So in this case, there is a role called Grafana, uh, guess which? Uh, to who it belongs to, uh, and uh, uh, the service account Grafana, okay, in the namespace default, we, where it is bound. So we we have gi given bound this role uh, to the service account of Grafana in the default namespace. Um, another example, okay, which is uh, from I think also for my Minikube, okay, is simply the the ba most basic and most I think. Uh, important uh, user is the cluster admin, okay, uh, where the cluster admin uh, role is bound to the system masters group, okay, everyone who is in the system master group can uh, use this cluster admin role, and if you recall, that was the rule with all these wildcards uh, uh, you, can, uh, you saw before. So now a very short uh, uh, one slide introduction to the Middle Eastern languages, okay. Uh, which is not related, but I think uh, it's really fun to, uh, after we've heard uh, so much dry information. So, uh, every Semitic language, when, uh, uh, when they are building a word, okay, they're using three consonants. These are the root consonants of every uh, Semitic word, both Hebrew, Arabic, and other Semitic languages. So, if we are looking at Arbuck, okay, in case of Arbuck, these consonants are R, B, and C, right? So if I'm reading, writing down it in one of the Semitic languages, okay, I s and I try to read it, okay, because these languages are al also extrapolating, okay, the vowels, okay, I get Rabak, okay? Now the question is, is there anyone who speaks Arabic, or Hebrew, nothing? 
So what does it mean if I'm translating this word to in English? Damn. <laughs> okay? So um, this is just a short, uh, short thing. Okay, uh, but actually damn is just a, you know, a more light translation. So rules of, of, of writing, okay, Arbuck. So obviously, like in every uh, uh, access control system, the most important thing is to apply least privilege principle, okay? Every actor, every subject has to get the least privileges. It needs to complete its own work. Um, now, in case we are talking about services which are running inside Kubernetes and they get, uh, get service uh, tokens, okay, what we should do is, for example, in case of someone writes a Kubernetes oper uh, operator on, uh, under Kubernetes, obviously we'd, uh, uh, we would list, okay, um, the pods, okay, um, you know, the, the config mess or what actually it needs to access through the API server, which are the resources it needs to complete its job. Now, we need to list also what are the verbs it actually needs, okay, and then, you know, we are creating a role, and from this, okay, we are binding this role to the service account we are going to give to this, uh, uh, to this service. Now, it's usually it's more simple, okay, because in case of operators and, and, and different kind of act, act, actors inside the cluster, okay, it should be pl pretty clear for the maintainer to understand, okay, what kind of uh, uh, object it needs to access, what kind of uh, 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 verbs it's going to need. So it's, go it's straightforward in the sense that, you know, you can limit really, you know, its access to only things it needs. The question stays, okay, that what kind of things it, it's going to need to access. And obviously, if it's going to need to access uh, multiple, okay, things, then uh, we have to, uh, uh, you know, uh, we have to limit the access to its service account. Now, if we are talking about giving, assigning RBAC to actually operators, or users, or SREs, to DevOps, and so on and so on, okay, it's going to be, uh, uh, it, it, it's going to be way more complex, okay, because because it's not always clear, okay, what the users need. And this, and here, from this point of view, Kubernetes RBAC is nothing uh, different from any kind of, you know, uh, access control system and its prob management problems, okay, that you will have. You will start with giving someone, uh, uh, you know, few privileges, then it turns out that one uh, day it needs a little bit more, you're added, but then you're forgetting to remove the privileges you, you need for once, and you, you leave it from there, and you start to copy it, and, and so on and so on. So it's, uh, 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 it, 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 is not, it is not easy, but here also you have sometimes, okay, um, more simple, okay, decisions like, you know, uh, external users like uh, the uh, CD tools, okay, which need uh, to able to spawn things inside the Kubernetes uh, cluster. But in any, ca any case, okay, uh, the last comment, okay, using wildcards inside uh, uh, roles is usually a bad sign, okay? And you should limit this. So, okay, this was the first two parts, okay, I would say for first half, okay, o of the discussion. We get some to the same, you know, level of understanding what we have in Kubernetes Arbuck. So now let's talk a little bit about issues, okay, uh, around Arbuck and things we, s we see out in the wild. So, um, First thing, okay, is what I want to talk about, privilege inversions. Who have heard the, uh, the word privilege inversion before? I thought that, I that this is an existing, have you heard, okay? Because I thought that this was an exist, uh, this, this was a thing, and I was convinced that it was a thing, and it turned out that if you are looking at Google, okay, we are writing privilege inversion, okay, there is no, <laughs> you don't find anything that me, uh, that shows that the same understanding as I have. Then I understood why, because actually I was, uh, uh, I was all, uh, I came f for long years. I was writing uh, 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 in real-time operating systems software, and there is a thing there you call priority inversion. I don't know. Yeah, you you, you heard about it. So. Right, right, right. So, so somehow it looks like my brain just you know translated uh, translated these things. So from now on, from this discussion, you understand that this is a thing. There is a priority inversion, okay? Priority inversion is actually, okay, is 
is this definition of inadvertently assigning privileges, okay, to a subject which should be covered by other privileges, okay? Um, and example, very simple example. There is, uh, um, there is in role, there is an access to an API called exec insight pods, right? I think most of you heard about the exec uh, API. So obviously this is a diff uh, this is it's an, as an entry inside the role. And let's say that there is a user, okay, a subject called A, okay, who has this exec privilege on pods, but he doesn't have any other any other uh, privileges inside. So theoretically he cannot create pods, he cre uh, cannot d delete secrets and so on and so on, just only can exec. So let's say, okay, that subject B is a service account, okay? With the deployment, uh, uh, delete privileges. So there is a subject B, okay, with a service account, and it is allowed to delete uh, deployments, right? And now the interesting thing comes. Okay, the subject A opens a shell inside uh, on a pod which has the service account B mounted inside, right? And what's going to happen? Okay, since there is a service account with a service account token inside, we see that subject A can delete deployments, though we never gave this permission to it. But in, in practice, it can delete deployments, right? And this is the, um, obviously if someone has an exec, uh, uh, I, I will prove to, I can prove to you afterwards that if someone has an exec privileges, okay, mostly have a cluster takeover case in, in a, anyhow. Okay, so it, uh, this obviously bypasses the, uh, uh, the role of deployment delete. Okay. Hmm? Well, it yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's, a, it's a, some, it's a kind of privilege escalation. Yeah, sure. So it's interesting. Okay, it's a, it's a screenshot. I don't know if you see it right, but uh, it comes from uh, from Cubescape Cloud's own uh, Arbac visualizer. Okay, and what you uh, can see here is. Is the re uh, is the resource okay? Here are the cluster roles okay, and here are the uh, uh, the actual uh, the um, subjects okay, which can uh, uh, access these. Okay, and you can see that inside one of the clusters okay, I just uh, I, I saw that who has exact privileges on every pod resource okay, and ov obviously cluster admin can has access. Can the operator okay also has exec on everything, which is not really a, f I'm not sure that is right. And also Velero server has access on everything. Uh, kind of fishy, but I'm okay, this is something okay that I I it doesn't seem right, okay? And if you're looking at all those users, uh, okay, and groups who have ac uh, access, okay, this is this doesn't really look, look good in practice. And I think it is the same uh, simple EKS cluster, okay, with a few stuff inside. Another example, okay, and this is a, a little bit more complex of uh, example of escal privilege escalation or, or, or uh, inversion case, okay? Subject A is a create privilege on pods. No other privileges, nothing, okay? Subject A creates a pod, creates a pod with a Kubernetes secret map inside. So if I am able in Kubernetes Arbuck to create, okay, to create a pod, I'm allowed to map in inside any secret which is inside the same namespace, right? Now, I can create this pod with a simple curl command which takes this file, posts it to my server, that's it, right? And obviously, I, when I have a crea pod creation, okay, uh, uh, pod create a, a role, okay, I can have access to any secret, I have a config map, I can uh, connect to any PVC and, and so on and so on. And honestly, this is not so good, okay? We could, you know, find ourselves a few, you know, um, we could say to ourselves, well, exec, we are not giving to everyone exec privileges. But I I'm sure that pod creation is given to everyone, okay? To every CD tool, everyone who is trying, because actually this is what we are doing inside Kubernetes. And obviously, why th by the way, it's not just pod create, it's pod update, the same issue. Okay, um, it okay, again, this doesn't look good. And the same idea here, okay, 
I was checking who has put create privileges in the same uh, EKS cluster. You can see that everyone, okay? A whole bunch of things. And if you are l interested in RBUC, okay, go to Cubescape Cloud, okay, and just play with it, okay? It, it's fun, okay? Uh, you're you're saying certain five different interesting things around it. Everyone has uh, access to it. So actually, what is the answer to, okay? Uh, what is the answer uh, uh, to, to these kind of things? Because since RBAC cannot take into account the actual content okay, of, of an HTTP request, only the first line of the HTTP request and not the, the pushed uh, uh, structure, the object, okay, we have to rely on admission controllers. So ad RBAC is great. R RBAC isn't that complex, okay? It's, it looks frightening, okay? But, but it's actually, it's way, it's way simpler than I, I like it inside. But on the other hand, if you want to have fine-grained access, okay, of, of your Kubernetes uh, uh, cluster in the sense of access control, that wh who, are you, what, who you are letting to do what, okay, you must have an admission controller. Because I, I haven't even talked about, you know, okay, create someone who has a pod creation privilege, okay, can create uh, uh, a privileged container, okay, who have all the ac uh, node accesses, and you can map the whole uh, node root file system inside, and you have all the node uh, secrets and everything. So it is really important, okay, extending in, in production systems, extending uh, uh, Kubernetes RBAC and author uh, authorization and uh, access control with, uh, uh, with, uh, with a um, policy engine like those. So I don't know how much time I have still. Uh, so um, there is a quest. There was a question. I, if I recall, it was uh, uh, coming from um, Palo Alto Networks. Uh, some stage. Okay, whether container es escape equals cluster takeover. Okay, and where they they come from is that they said that well. One thing that we are writing operators for uh, for our applications, okay, but other thing that actually cloud vendors and and the whole whole way of how Kubernetes is built, okay, Be and I have to tell you that I'm not, you know, I'm not complaining, okay. I actually, I love it, but the way it, built, it was built, it really caused many vendors to build um, build different uh, uh, daemon sets and components inside their Kubernetes deployments, which have very high privileges, okay, uh, and re really high roles, okay, and uh, all this is true for many many components, okay, not just the cloud vendor, but other uh, also for inf other infrastructure components, okay, and uh, and what they asked is, okay, if I am able to penetrate as an attacker, uh, able to penetrate one of these containers, okay, and access to the serv service account, whether I can I take over the cluster itself. Okay, and in this uh, example, okay, I took the AWS node uh, um, uh, cluster role, okay, which is ob obviously used by AWS node daemon set in, in uh, EKS, but I could take the same thing from Google, okay, and from, uh, from uh, Azure as well. And, and, you know, you can see that it has an extensive uh, access okay, to different uh, uh, resources, okay, it can update nodes, okay, it can, um, you know, create list patch and also, by the way, delete uh, uh, Kubernetes events, okay, uh, which is great for an attacker who wants to clear up, okay, his uh, traces, okay, obviously can, you know, access pods, though I don't see that it can create pods, okay, it can get list watch namespaces and, and so on, but uh, and also can watch every uh, uh, resource. So in the sense, okay, of, of uh, generalization, okay, this is, I'm not sure that this is so bad as they, as they told, but it turned out that when they raised this, the same question was like three years ago, okay, which were like the early stages of all these projects of, of EKS and so on. And it turned out that, the, that they had much more privileges, uh, open privileges, which were not used. And, and actually cloud vendors made a job, okay, to really to tidy down and really add uh, least privilege principle, okay, these things. But, okay, if in general, if someone, and this is 
you know, not really related to the same question of, of demon sets, okay, uh, uh, hyper -age demon sets, but if an attacker is able to escape um, a Kubernetes contain, uh, container inside a Kubernetes container to the node and can access the file system, okay, what will he find, find there? He'll find there uh, the kubelet's own uh, uh, secret key, okay, which it uses to connect the kube API. It means that automatically he will, you know, inherit all the privileges of a Kubernetes node and a kubelet inside. Okay, it will also find uh, uh, maybe also the bootstrap uh, token, which is another precious part, okay, uh, 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 in a Kubernetes cluster. So it w if someone is able, if a single container able to escape, uh, uh, you know, escape the contain, uh, con uh, attacker is able to escape a container inside the Kubernetes cluster, it has a pretty high privileges. And there was an extra work Okay, which was done in order to filter out many th other things of which a Kubernetes node can done. Okay, and the last question, uh, for which we have uh, still a few minutes, okay, I is uh, actually the question of who has uh, who should use cluster admin in a Kubernetes cluster. Okay, which is you, uh, you saw that cluster admins are you know has access to everything; they can do whatever they want. Okay, against the API server. And, you know, in general, okay, just like in any other case, okay, their use should be limited to close to zero, okay, uh, which is not an easy thing, okay. Uh, but, okay, I do have a controversial opinion about this, okay, because people are, are, are really talking and in many blogs were written about how to limit cluster admin access and how important it is, okay. To uh, to create users for each DevOps engineer and each CI/CD tool and so on. My controversial option is, uh, opinion is that, you know, in case okay you okay I'm fine I'm fine with the principle of limiting uh, cluster admin, but if you are any cluster user okay who can create pods okay can steal your secret can take over the nodes and so on okay. What are the point of, of limiting the cluster admin access? So first, okay, if you're thinking you have a cluster you want to secure, okay, if you have to decide two things, whether I'm starting to create for every DevOps engineer, uh, creating a different admin uh, 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 access with different namespaces uh, to them, uh, assigned to them, and, and so, or, or applying, you know, t taking an admission controller which starts to limit, okay, these things, I say to you, and it's controversial, okay, Start with the mesh admission controller. Start to limit uh, those things. Obviously, store the cluster admin. Okay, protect it. But just after, okay, you've set up your your protection around the cluster uh, uh, around your uh, uh, cluster with with an admission controller. Afterwards, starts to in, uh, start to invest of creating okay uh, different administrative users okay for the Kubernetes cluster. So. Um, just uh, really a last word, okay, uh, we are the Cubescape team from Armo. Um, we, you know, in, in Cubescape we are investing a lot of, you know, of our, uh, how to manage RBAC, both from the CLI, how to under find out issues uh, uh, around RBAC, and the visualization tool we have on, uh, on our Cubescape cloud site is really neat, okay, and, and, and I suggest you look, uh, have a look at it. Okay, and you know, I really, if you want to have any questions, I'm here still afterwards. So, yeah, yeah, but I have to tell you that I if, again, just think about it, you're right, okay? I I if, if I'm creating a role, okay, which can create only within a given namespace pod, okay, it should be able to access only the secrets inside that pod. However, you can create Right, a node. Uh, uh, you can map. Uh, you can attack the node by mapping inside. Okay, uh, the volumes. Okay, uh, of the host. Okay, use the secrets. Okay, of the Kubernetes node to access the API uh, a server again, and you can bring every secret from there because Kubernetes node ha knows ha must have access to the Kubernetes secrets. Otherwise, they cannot bring them in to the uh, on to the pod. Map them into the pod. So it's uh yeah. yeah. <laughs>
So this is why, okay, uh, I, I would say that I'm, again, open, f uh, first of all, okay, at an admission controller and, and, and protect, okay, your Kubernetes node, okay, and only let, okay, very, very specific, okay, give exceptions, okay, to every each, you know, deployment or daemon set, okay, which must uh, access, okay, the, uh, the node volumes, and just after that, okay, start to, uh, afterwards, the other things. Contra Controversial opinion for sure. Yeah. Uh, no, sorry. no, it's good. It gives it gives us thoughts, gives us things to discuss. Did you have a question? Was, no, okay. Um, other questions or off to a quick little break, reset, and downstairs or upstairs as you swap? You got one more question. All right. Yeah. Oh, great T-shirt. All yeah. right, nice. Don't touch my YAML. Excellent. Yeah. Thank um, you very thanks much, Thanks so much. Have a great...